turn on the camera and let's do a big seed haul from Ferry Morse. It's coming from my friend, Laura, a subscriber of mine that I became very friendly with, sent me out this box right here. It had a big old bag in it and it is filled to the gills with nothing but seeds. So I thought we would do a Ferry Morse seed haul. Shout out to Laura. We'll go through them and separate them all. I mean, I don't even know if you can see all that. There's a ton. So, Ferry Morris is usually at like a Home Depot or um, a Lowe's. Don't mind me. It's earlier in the morning here. Look at this hot mess. And it's freezing here today and actually snowing. Snow flurrying and, and windy. We're getting, I guess, those high winds that everyone else got. So, I thought I would show you all the seeds. And we could organize some throughout this video. So again, a great big shout out to Lara for all the seeds that are falling everywhere. And we'll go through them. And I will mention a few of my favorites. I know I may not be gardening this year, but I will name some of my favorite uh, peppers, tomatoes, what type of beans do I like to grow within the same video? So, speaking of beans, she sends this big package of uh, Blue Lake bush beans. So, if you know anything about bush beans, and you can always go back and look at my garden. Um, bush beans like to be planted very close together. A bush bean is not something that needs to be trellised. And I'm telling you what, if you plant them close together... You will get a buku amount of beans, string beans. So I planted the Blue Lake bush bean before. They're fantastic. And that is just one of my little things that I like to plant. And that's a lot of bush beans. I prefer bush beans over pole beans, but that's me. So she has that in there. Um, onions. These are the Texas Grano. I've never grown this type before. But... I tried two attempts at growing onions and once my dogs ran through them. Um, so yeah, onions, you can plant them in the cell and then plant them out uh, when they get warmer and let them go the whole entire season. Um, but yeah, these are the Texas Grano onions right there. We have a big pack of Shade Mix Wildflower. It's a big old pack. Her son wanted to put some flowers in the box. So, thank you, sweetie. Um, so, yeah. If you know, wherever you grow a garden, always grow something beautiful. Whether it be sunflowers, or I always planted a lot of nasturtiums, marigold sunflowers. Um, nasturtiums are great in a garden. It helps with the bugs, believe it or not. So here's a nasturtium uh, dwarf jewel mix color. I planted this one last year and the year before. Um, dwarf isn't bad. You can also fit this in the green stalk planter. Let's see. We have a lot of seeds to go through. Some morning glories to heavenly blue. I don't really plant morning glories because if you know, um, you really need a good space for them because they vine and they just take over everywhere. But they're gorgeous. Autumn Beauties, I grew these last year. They lasted the entire season. Planted them in spring. I had them the whole rest of spring, summer, and fall. I love sunflowers that just keep on going. I used to be a person that could never grow red beets. Not directly because the birds would come and disrupt the seed and whatnot. I think planting um, beets in a cell count tray works out great because you can just pull it out and put it right in. I became very successful growing beets. Top two favorite beets are the Detroit red beets. Actually, I have three. The long top early wonder beets and my favorite is the um, Chitoga beet from M.I. Gardener. I've only ever bought M.I. Gardener seeds from the time I started YouTube and purchased my first set of seeds. Um, I have used dollar store seeds. They do work. They do germinate. And I like the Ferrymore seeds a lot. So here's Detroit Red Beets. And that's my tip. 
plant them in a cell tray and then plant them out into your garden and they will be very successful. You can drop four to six seeds within that little tray and as one gets bigger, it'll pu push itself away from the other beets. Hopefully that makes sense and you can get a continuous harvest. So love beets, love, love, love them. Here are some sugar daddy peas, love peas. I like the sugar snap peas. Um, if you're going to do the other peas, you have to grow a lot of pea plants to get a lot of peas. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Here's some cucumber. This is Garden Sweet uh, Burpless. Gotta love a good cucumber. I used straight eight, and I forget the name I used last year. Here's the Naughty Marietta Marigold. I planted those before. They're gorgeous. I always would do one corner that has a marigold in it to help with the bugs and I would plant a nasturtium and then I would do an herb so that's just how I did it we're going to put that in the flower pile we have some salad bowl lettuce which is something I grew on my green stalk planter I also grew this in my raised bed uh, you can never go wrong with planting some good lettuce this is a lot of seeds my friend Okra, the Clemson Spineless. I'm not a huge fan of okra, but I did like it pickled. We did a challenge, um, pickled okra. I think it was me, Moonchild, my moderator, Indiana Backyard Gardener, and someone else. And I tried it pickled. Ice cold is really good. Out of the jar, just warm, it was okay. But okra is something that will produce a lot. And it's good if you do grow it because you can use this as a filler to put in soups and stews. Uh, let's see, we have the Topolino sunflower. I grew this one before, it's also good in a container right there. Here's the dainty Marietta Marigold again. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, Cracker Jack mixed color marigolds. You can never go wrong with marigolds. The bees absolutely love marigolds. Um, sage, this is broadleaf. I love growing herbs. Sage, that's my favorite, and it comes back. It's a perennial. So I'm into planting perennial things that'll come back, like oregano, sage, rosemary, depending on your climate. But this is a good one right here. I like to grow a lot of herbs, for sure. Some pansies. These are the sweet giants. How beautiful. She threw in some easy tape, plantable seed tape. This is for an example, if you're horrible at planting beets, you could put the seed on it, lay the tape down, and then you would just cover it up with soil. So there's two packs in this big seed hole of fairy morphs from my friend, Laura. Again, thank you, Laura. Here's some spring burpless um, cucumbers. We have some true lavender, love lavender. It's also a perennial. I like picking the flowers off and just letting them air dry or you could put them in a dehydrator and you can make your own lavender tea, which is extremely relaxing. Very relaxing. So I'm gonna put that in the herb pile. Here is a Sumter, S-U-M-T-E-R cucumber. I've never heard of this kind before. So that's exciting. You can never go wrong with a good cucumber. Straight eight. I planted this a gazillion times. A lot of success. Didn't have a lot of success at my roommate's house, just with cucumbers in general. I think it was the spot of where they were at. Here's gray zucchini. If you know, you know. I was in Garden State Gardener's um, competition he had last year. Grow the largest zucchini. I did and won a hundred dollars. Thank you, Mr. Joe from Garden State Gardener. And I just used uh, this is a regular gray zucchini. Yeah, I just used a regular zucchini. My zucchinis can grow pretty big. If you know, you know, if you take your eye off a zucchini one day, the next day it could go out there and it could be like the length of my arm. But zucchini is very great for zucchini bread, for dehydrating. Um, you can also put it in soups and stews as a filler. Here's the Tall Top Early Wonder. I planted a lot of these last season. Absolutely love them. It gets really tall tops. You can eat the leaves 
off of these beets. My chickens also love them. So a great beet right here. Tall top early wonder. Crimson sweet watermelon I grew. Um, I grew quite a few different watermelons. Um, the smaller ones like the icebox type um, because you don't need a lot of space to plant some good watermelon. So there's two packs of those. San Marzano tomatoes. A pack of those right there. Uh, my first year in that garden, it did pretty well. I got a good bit of San Marzano's. I can't say I don't dislike them, but I prefer the Mr. Stripey Roma tomato. Um, it was so prolific. Absolutely love that. That is one of my favorite tomatoes. Um, another favorite tomato of mine is Kellogg's Breakfast. Uh, Dr. Winchie's is how I say it. And a good beefsteak tomato. Uh, this is a big boy hybrid. Speaking of big tomato right there. Wonderful, wonderful tomato. We'll put that in the tomato pile. Some Lostiato kale. I have this from M.I. Gardner. And I bought this from Ferry Morris. Fantastic. I like to dehydrate it. You can powder it and put it and sneak it in your children's food. They will never know they're getting their greens. This is a superpower food in case you don't know that. It's really, really good for you. I used to love it in my salads. And it's really good in scrambled eggs. Um, my kale lasted spring all the way through winter. So great kale. So great kale to have. Um, I'm not going to be really good with some of these flowers. A gypsophilia. How beautiful is that? We have some more Swiss giant pansies. Let me put that in the flower pile. Some flowers I might not be able to pronounce. It's another pack of those Topolino sunflowers. And yeah, I have a couple people on my live that want a few seeds of this. And she doesn't mind. Um, cause she gave them to me. This is called Vulcan Mallow. It's an annual, but look at this beauty. It's so different. So far I found two packs of these, so stay tuned. I will send a couple seeds of those out. And then if you know, about five years ago, I fell in love with just zinnias. Any type of zinnia, the small, the medium, the large, any colors. It's one of my favorite is growing zinnias. Let's keep going in this box, shall we? Here's some more Heavenly Blue Morning Glories. This is the Mammoth Sunflower. If you know, you could go back and look at my videos. I am like a champ of growing sunflowers. Um, I just have my favorites. Um, the big head ones, I don't mind. But remember, you're just going to get one head and then you have to rip it all out. They're great and everything. You could plant like two or three. Chickens will love you for them. Um, but I do like planting like the Russian Mammoth. Um, the ones where you get multiple heads that will keep going all season long. The Autumn Beauties, my favorite. And I know I'm going to have to make a couple piles on the flowers. Here's some more marigolds. We have some purple cone flower, which is a perennial. It will come back. Um, it's also known as uh, Echinacea. And you can make an echinacea tea with it. Um, you can also save on to some of the seeds that will come from the middle of the heads. Absolutely love uh, cone flowers big time and so do the bees. Here's some tall Utah celery. I love growing celery. I had to learn and I figured it out and I had a whole wheelbarrow of celery last year. You can freeze it. You can powder it. I powdered some powdered a lot and I froze a lot um, and for fresh eating. Celery is awesome. You need to have that going about now. Um, certain things like peppers, tomatoes, your celery, your cauliflower, your broccoli, your cabbages that all and your onions should all be started and going. Here's some sweet basil. If you know, you know I love basil. My favorite is Genovese. This is a good one. A really, really good basil right here. Um, this is Morning Glory Sunrise Serenade. Look how different this looks. 
so pretty. Here's Red Rush and Kale, which I think I'm going to try to start some seeds here. Stay tuned for that. There's some Red Rush and Kale. Kale is so good. I think the only one I don't really care for is the Curly Kale. Um, Cosmos last year was like my new favorite thing. I got them in like all different colors. I love Cosmos. Um, because if you're going to have a garden, you might as well plant something beautiful for yourself as well. And this is the Daydream Cosmos. Look how pretty they are. Love, love Cosmos in all colors. Let's pull out another stack of... These look like the... Co um... Nope. Wrong one. This is Delphinium, I think is how it's pronounced. Pacific Giant Mixed Colors right here. I was going to say what it reminds me of, and now I can't think of it. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, the second year, they usually do a little bit better. That is also perennial. We have some more pansies right there, which is an annual. Some lily put zinnias. Some more dwarf jeweled mixed colored uh, nasturtium. Love these last year. This is called the Cherry Queen Zinnia. I mean, bright red. It's absolutely gorgeous. They do great in full sun. I love, love, love zinnias. I want to get some different color ones like the lime to like just all those weird colors. I so want to collect some of them. I love zinnias. Love them. I don't have like a specific. I mean, red was really, really pretty, but I just love them all. Bright Lights Mixed Colored Cosmos. I grew these last year. Fantastic. Right there. Easy to seed save as well. Some more Heavenly Blue Morning Glory. Some African Daisy Mixed Color right here. Which I just started getting into these. They are an annual. I've heard some people say that the African Daisies will come back. I don't know. Here's early bird zinnias. Love these. I planted these last year. Fantastic. Um, tall mixed colored morning glories. If you have a really nice trellis in the room for morning glories, you will love them. Um, they proclaim they're an annual, but if you know, you know, morning glories come back because it's like a vine. Here, I don't know how to say this. I'm just going to call it rainbow mixed color. Coleus. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Right there, absolutely gorgeous. We have some early long purple eggplants right here. Quick story, I got whirlbarrels barrels full of eggplants. My favorite eggplants are the Black Beauty. I like the Oswald. That's a really, really good one and it's a big one. Um, purple Beauty. No, it's Rosa Blanca, my top three, right there. And then I did the like the long fingers, the early long. They were they're a little bit fatter and longer. Oh my gosh, so great for what was going on last year. I peeled them, um, took the skin off. I would dice it in chunks and fry it up in some oil, and I would take it out and then I would do my own little sauce with fresh tomatoes and I would add this back in at the end. Oh my lone. So, so good. I love eggplant. My sons love eggplant. We're like a big eggplant family. Here's the sweetie tomatoes right here, which is like a cherry tomato. Some oregano, if you know, you know. Oregano has so many medicinal properties to it. Um, it's great and it comes back every single year, like perennial. I would not have an herb garden without growing oregano. I had mine in, in like two different spots, my herb garden and a Kentucky whiskey barrel. Absolutely adore oregano. Let's put that in the spice pile. Some Ruby Eclipse Sunflower. Absolutely gorgeous. Grew them. I love all sunflowers. Here's the great zucchini. Again, love it, love it. Some more sage. Here's another big boy hybrid tomato. Fantastic tomato. Large red cherry tomatoes. I grew a bunch of them. Fantastic. And let's do another handful, shall we? 
some sweet pea early gigantia mixed color right here. Gorgeous. Some more delphinium right there. I'm trying to go through this without making this video super duper long. Um, champion radishes. Radishes are great. If you're not a fan of radish, try roast them in the oven. Fantastic. Any radish. And I grew white radishes last year that were so good. Some more lily put zinnias. Um, some more red, red Russian kale. You can never go wrong with a lot of kale. Blanket flower. I bought my first original one. Well, two. Fantastic. And it comes back every year. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's in, like an orangey yellow. And then it has it in red. And it's like a ground cover. Oh, it's so, so pretty. If you want like an eye stopper for the front of your house. Really pretty. You can go back and see that. Okay. I'm just grabbing handfuls, my friends. More. Put that in the pile. More marigolds. Some early call morning glories. I love Shasta daisies. This is Alaska Shasta daisies. Fantastic. It's a perennial. Absolutely love it. It will come back. Um... Some more of the mallow right there, which is only an annual. Some more zinnias. Sorry, my pile is falling. Cracker Jack marigolds. The dwarf nasturtiums again. Love it, love it. Sweet giant um, pansies. Some heavenly blue um, morning glories. What did I just knock over? Let me grab this real quick. I am in the dining room. And this was another red Russian kale. We are sitting at the table. We are gumming through seeds. Here is dill. So dill is great to plant really early in the season. It does fantastic. Once it gets warm, it likes to bolt. So this is going to go into the herb pile. And you can freeze some dill because, you know, if you know, if you're going to do cucumbers, if you don't just keep having a concession of dill, you won't have dill to put in your cucumbers. So, yeah, love dill. Spicy Saber Basil. Never saw this one before. By Burpee, absolutely am so inquisitive about this basil. I definitely want to grow that. I'm a huge basil person. Some Texas Grano Onions. We'll put that in that pile. These are Sweet Pepper Cubanellas. I've grown these. Fantastic. Absolutely love them. A uh, bunch of onions. I grow a lot of these. If you saw my video, I left some stay in the ground really long and I got a big head on the bottom. Bunching onions just grow really, really well. So I'm going to put that in that onion pile. Some early long purple eggplant let's put that with that blanket flower nasturtium zinnias okay i showed them let's make a pepper pile so many seeds in here laura oh my goodness gracious let's see some more pansies they do well green top bunching red beets if you know you know i happen to love red beets some more of the covert garden flower. Here's the moonflower white morning glory. Look at this beautiful sensation piccati. So I'm going to pronounce it Cosmo. <gasps> Pretty sure I grew this one last year. It is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Love it. Some more Alaska Shasta daisies. Some blanket flower. Some alyssum. I had some the year before, and then I don't know what happened. It died off, but this is really, really good to have. Alyssum. And let's go for another handful. See if we could flood Jane's table. Some more oregano. And I'm trying to go a little bit quicker on this seed hole so it doesn't take too long. Oregano, which is great. I planted herbs really early last year, and they came up great. This is Long Island Mammoth Dill, which I've grown this one. Fantastic. 
Phil, it's great to have in your herb garden. Sweet pea. Beautiful. A lot of flowers here. Some dark green zucchini summer squash. That's the dark one. Love it. Um, when it comes to me, I will remember to tell you my favorite zucchini other than the dark green zucchini. Um, I also like the gray zucchini. And I have a couple of fan favorites from M.I. Gardener. Here's some more salad bowl lettuce. We're going to get some seeds started. Even though my circumstances, chickens are going to need some greens. Black Beauty, absolutely love Black Beauty eggplant. Love it, love it, love it. Here's another pack. Here's an early long purple. Love eggplants. Love it all. Here is some Stella sunflowers, which are so, so pretty. Some more broadleaf sage. Going into the herb pile. Cubanella sweet peppers. Another pack right there. Some all sweet watermelon. This is a bigger one. I have not grown this one. Not before. I usually do because of the space, the smaller ones, but that would be great. Here's a Jubilee watermelon. Love, love watermelon. This is the Black Beauty zucchini that I absolutely love. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this zucchini. Makes a great zucchini bread. Some more salad bowl lettuce. Long Island Mammoth Dill. My herb pile is getting a little high. Rosemary. Love it, love it, love it. Like I said, it's perennial. It's one of those herbs that's a must-have, especially if you like to cook. Has a lot of medicinal uh, properties. You can look it up. Fantastic. Love it. I like to use it as skewers. Skewers? Let me pronounce that right. And then I put chicken and vegetables down it. Some peppermint. Mint has a lot of medicinal herbs. It's so great. I'm addicted to mint. I love it in my iced tea, but always plant it in a pot. Do not plant it in your garden. It will take over everything. So I'm going to put that in the herb pile. Peppermint, mint, love it. Here is the early prolific straight neck uh, summer squash. I grew this last year. Great squash, great squash. Really, really good. It's going to go in the squash pile. There's another pack, yellow squash. I have this on, I'm freezing. I know you guys see me in my black zip up where the gray one all the time, it's just cold in here. And it's like winter all over again here in Pennsylvania. Cilantro, coriander. So if you miss it, you can at least harvest it for the seed. Some more rosemary, some sweet basil. Rosemary. <laughs> Normally, I'd be doing my MI Gardener's um, seed haul. My seeds are out in the garage. So, this is fantastic. It gives me such an amazing. I mean, this is out of the kindness of her heart, and I love it. But I love doing seed hauls. I love buying from MI Gardener. She was like, I'm going to send you out some seeds. She sent me out buku amount of seeds. So, thank you, thank you, Laura. I so appreciate it. Laura's the one that bought me my um, buddy heater, and I did the mail call shout out and was calling her Lisa in the whole video because I was like nervous. This is the Rainbow Blend Sweet Pepper. She sent me so many seeds, my friends. I love growing peppers. Some people will call me the pepper queen. Sometimes they'll call me the tomato queen. I will always grow peppers. I love it. Some more Lafayette kale. Love it. Green arrow bush peas. It says bush on there, so you don't need anything to trellis it. Um, I'm going to put that there. Sweet pea. So pretty. Look at those colors. Some more sweet basil. If you know, you can never have enough basil. Not my world. Rosemary. Some more peppermint. Another peppermint. Wow. Just wow with all these seeds. Early long purple. Um, she said she just grabbed handfuls. 
and just threw them in a bag and threw them in the box. Oh my goodness, all these eggplants are so great. Uh, giant double mixed colored zinnias. I've grown these, love them. Some sweet Italian basil. I grew a lot of this last year, love it. If you pick or prune your basil correctly, your basil will go the entire season. I have a video on that, um, on how to prune your basil. Gray zucchini squash. Some sweet California Wonder. This is one of my favorite bell peppers. The Big Bertha is one of my favorite peppers from M.I. Gardner. Um, the Resistant Pepper from M.I. Gardner is one of my favorite. Uh, let me see. Because I said if it comes to mind when I'm showing peppers. This is a really, really good one. I like the Giant Marconis. I like the Roasting Peppers. I just love peppers. Um, the Purple Beauties, they're really good, to name a few. This is some Muncher Cucumbers, which are smaller for you to be able to do cucumbers. I mean, pickles, I'm sorry. Um, we have some more Texas Grano Onions. I'm going to put that in the pile. Try not to drop any. More Salad Bowl Lettuce. You can never have enough greens. I have chickens. Cantaloupe, Hearts of Gold. I'm not a fan of cantaloupe, but I do grow it. And I grow it for my kids because they all like cantaloupe. I don't. Um, Detroit Dark Red Beets. Love them, love them, love them. Some Sumster Cucumbers. Never heard of this type before. But it looks like a good pickling one. This is uh, Winter Squash to Buttercup. I love growing squashes, the winter ones. Um, acorn, the sweet meat I did last season, sweet meat. I did the acorn. I did butternut. Something else, I can't think of what it is, but oh my goodness. I love all winter squashes. Anybody wants to send me a bunch of squashes, I'm your girl. Uh, petite, petite, sweet, little finger carrots. Love growing carrots. Uh, here's another prolific summer squash. Dark green zucchini. Sweet Italian basil. <laughs> Sierra gold. Never heard of this particular one, but this is Sierra gold cantaloupe. Look at how yummy that looks. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm trying not to make it super long, but... We got a seed hole. Here's the Topolino Sunflower. Jack Kyle might start falling over. Look at this marigold. It's called a Jolly Jester Marigold. Is that not different? Absolutely gorgeous. I love marigolds and zinnias, but when they're different like this, I'm your gr I'm growing them. Um, we have some Lacinato Kale again. We have some cherry bell radishes. Like I said, try roasting them. You'll love them. Beefsteak tomato right there. Some cilantro, which bolts very easily as soon as it gets hot. So plant it early. Some more Cubanella sweet peppers. Whoops, I just messed up my tomato. Long imperator carrots right there. The rainbow mixed carrots. I love growing rainbow carrots. Love them, love them, love them. And I'm telling you, I feel like rainbow carrots, they hold up better in the refrigerator long term for the whole winter. Right there. Some rainbow carrots, my friend. That's the rainbow mix. Um, we have the bushy cucumber right there. Some more Lacinato kale. Some more alyssum. Carpet of snow. Tall Top Early Wonders. I am so excited about all these seeds. Red Russian Kale. The Utah Tall Celery. Another pack. Because, you know, you can never have one pack of celery. Because, you know, you're using a lot of seeds. The seeds are really tiny. Um, Walla Walla Onions. Love them, love them. 
Here's some buttercup squash, winter squash. Love it. Some Texas grano onions. Because if you know, when I was moving, I gave a lot of my dollar store seeds to Debbie, the one that was helping me pack to help her out. Here is the bird and butterfly mixed wildflower. If you know, I always plant things that are beautiful so I can stop and take a breath. And I like to be able to have food for the birds and for the butterflies. So look at this beauty. Wildflower mix. Love it. My arms are overflowing. We have more green arrow bush peas right there. We have Bloomsdale Longstanding Spinach. I'm a huge fan of spinach. Absolutely love it. You should have your spinach started now. It likes it when it's pretty cool out. I grew spinach during the winter. My first um, season there. So, spinach. Yay. Black Seeded Simpson Lettuce. It's a very good lettuce. I've grown that one before. Some Scarlet Nancy Carrots. Love them. I've grown them before. This is a whole big bag of sweet corn, the Silver Queen Hybrid. Big bag of corn right there. This is Golden Cross Bantam. Big package of corn again right there. Corn, eh, it's usually pretty reasonable. You have to have a lot of room and you have to shake the stalks. The whole process for growing corn but it can be done we have some kentucky wonder i grew these up a trellis before they're pretty good just make sure you get them in time um, a little bit earlier so that they're not real stringy but this is a good bean to have but it's not a bush bean you have to trellis this particular bean okay let's keep going salad bowl lettuce we have some more sage, dark green zucchini. You can never have enough zucchini. This is the Chinese giant um, sweet pepper. Love this pepper. If you know, you know. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I also did the Big Bertha pepper, which is pretty, pretty big. Would highly recommend that. And the resistant uh, pepper. All my seeds came from MI Gardener. The resistance. It's disease resistant, in other words. Great pepper. Some more watermelon right there. Starting to have some sliding. Gray zucchini. Mm -hmm. Some salad bowl lettuce. Grows great in a green stalk planter as well. Black Beauty zucchini. Mm -hmm. Tender sweet carrots. As soon as your ground is workable, get your carrots in. I like the concession, so I'm trying to go a little bit quicker so that my phone's getting a little full on memory. We got the Cherry Bell Radishes. Early prolific straight neck. Some more bunch of onions. Uh, dark green zucchini. Oof, a lot of zucchini, girl. Sparkler radish. These are so pretty. They're really good. I like eating these with some salt. Um, they're really good. Walla Walla onions. We have some French filet bush uh, beans, which the French beans I get from M.I. Gardner. Oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite beans besides the Blue Lake beans. Right there. It's like a thinner bean. It's so delicious. But then again, I just love beans. We have some more early long purple eggplants. We have tender sweet carrots. I mean, is she not crazy? Look at all these plants and flowers and herbs and vegetables. My goodness, Laura. Moonflower white. Right there. Morning glories. We have some Blue Lake stringless, which is an FM1K. It's a pole. It's not a bush. This is... A really good bean as well really good but it's not a bush bean make sure you look at your bean packages to make sure to see whether it needs to be trellised or whether it says bush if it's bush plant them close together 
The other beans, you have to put up a trellis. Mm. Take a sip of my coffee. And let's keep going, shall we? We have some more Cubanella peppers. I don't know if I said this or not, but it, the Jolly Jester Marigolds. Oh my gosh, I am in love with that color. Can more Kentucky Wonder beans. They need to be trellised. Some more straight neck squash. Mammoth sunflowers. My chickens are going to love Auntie Laura. Black Beauty zucchini. Let me tell you, you can never have enough seeds. Seeds is food security, my friends. Some more straight neck. Uh, this is so pretty. It's the red Picazzi Morning Glory. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. Some spineless okra. Dark green zucchini. <laughs> These are red cherry large fruited um, tomatoes, which you can plant in a pot. Use a little tomato cage. And I just dropped it. Here's the cher cherry bell radishes. Let me grab this. And put it in the pile. It's the red cherry large fruit tit right there. Gorgeous. Let's see. Are we almost making a day? Oh my goodness. I cannot believe all these seeds. Salad bowl. Cilantro. Bunch of onions. Trying to do piles, but they're starting to fall over. Um, Blue Lake 274, right there. Carrot Parisian Market. Look at these little carrots. They're so stinking cute. So cute. They grow little. Um, we have large red cherry tomatoes. We have the dainty marigolds right there. Delicious tomato. We have Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. We have some more Scarlet Morning Glories. Cilantro. Ruby Eclipse Sunflowers. More Cilantro. Denver's Carrots. Um, some more Morning Glories right here. Pink and purple. Bunch of onions. I grew the Tokyo Bunch of Onions last year. This is Crimson Giant Radishes, which radishes grow very quickly. This is Sweet Basil. And this one is Gray Zucchini right there. Oh my gosh. Where are we at in the box? Holy cow, Laura, Laura, Laura. Oh my goodness, my friends. Oh my goodness. A little bit more to go. <laughs> Sweet basil. Dark Detroit red beets. Uh, green arrow peas. Good bit in there. You need a lot of peas to get a lot of peas. Um, more marigolds. The dainties. Bunch of onions. Some more bunch of onions. The uh, skyscraper sunflower. Love this sunflower, my friends. It's amazing. Sliding all over. Some more mint. My piles are going to be all messed up. Uh, green top bunching beets right there. These are the Petite Sweet Little Fingers. I grew these carrots. Amazing. Um, here is some more Gypsophilia right there. Purple Cone Flowers. Red Russian Kale. Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. And are we at the bottom yet? Oh my gosh. The amount of seeds. Huge seed haul, my friends. Sweet basil. 
We are down to the nitty gritty. Some more straight neck squash. Beef steak tomato, an amazing tomato. Uh, Delphinium, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. San Marzano's and large red cherry tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. What a huge seed haul coming from my friend, Laura. Um, she just has a lot of seeds, she said, and she wanted to send me out seeds. Let me see if I can show you what this table looks like right now. These are the piles. Look at all those seeds. I'm going to try to get a little bit of a picture. Look at it all. Oh my goodness. It was all in that box. So, our huge seed haul from Ferry Moore Seeds coming from my friend Laura. Um, she's on my lives on Sunday. I'm going to see less the big packs. Oh, and I have a little pile over there. This is just some of the flowers. They're just falling everywhere. Sunflowers are over there. I'm dropping them on the floor. Oh, my goodness. And, yeah, in case I didn't show you that. This is one heck of a haul. Thank you, Laura. I love Fairy Moore Seeds. My um, picture box that I hold my seeds in. I actually have, I think, a whole box specifically just donated for Fairy Morse. I love the brand. Fairy Morse grows, so don't be fearful. A seed will grow. Um, it's a very good company, and I use MI Gardener. And a few Baker Creek, eh, it's still up in the air for me when it comes to Baker Creek. Um, I just love MI Gardener seeds. I don't have any germination problems. Never did since I started buying seed and stopped buying the plant. And I bought a buku amount of fiery more seeds and they all germinated. So my friends, what an astonishing humongous haul we just got through of the fairy more seeds that are coming from my friend Laura. So a great big shout out. She does not have a channel. Um, thank you, girl. I love you, love you, love you. I hope you all enjoyed this seed haul. I tried to go quick so the video wouldn't be too long, but love you all. Don't forget, collect seeds. Seeds is food security. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you, Laura. It's amazing. What an amount of seeds. God bless everyone.